this video has been prompted to be made by the brilliant Betty. Thank you, Betty, for bothering to let me know that something didn't make sense, for checking it and for helping me feel better about the fact that I messed it up again. Let's put it right. It does give me a wonderful opportunity to use some of my favourite quotes. This one from Henry Ford of car fame. I can't promise I'll be much more intelligent. I do have an absolutely splitting headache right now, but I'm going to try very hard to approach those questions again with a little bit more intelligence and some help from Betty. So let's have another go at question five from checkpoint three of lesson 13. Let's see if third time is lucky. So. The syringe has a volume of five centimetres cubed. The pressure at that volume is seven pascals. The plunger is moved to a new position. So this was V1, this was P1. The new pressure, which is P2, I am told is eight pascals. So the pressure has gone up a little bit. What would the new volume be? The volume of the syringe is what I'm going to find in centimetres cubed. And if the pressure has increased a little bit, I'm expecting the volume to come down a little bit, but not quite as much as it did last time. So let's recall the equation. Just said that and you don't have to recall the equation because this is one of the equations on your formula sheet, isn't it? However, just showing off there you see because I get everything right all the time that I can remember the equation even though I don't have to yeah I'm not making this any better I get that uh, the pressure p1 is 7 the volume v1 is 5 the pressure p2 is 8 the volume v2 is what I am trying to find out 7 times 5 is 35 but with all the mistakes I'm making, I think it's probably best that I just check that on a calculator. That's 35. So 8 times V2 is carried down. Then rearranging the equation, hopefully correctly this time, I need to divide both sides by 8. So these ones cancel. So I should be doing 35 divided by 8, not 8 divided by 35, which was a foolish and silly error to make. Divide by 8. The answer that I get now is a much more sensible, just a little bit smaller volume. And I'm going to round that to 4.4 centimetres cubed for neatness. And that is a little bit smaller than 5, which makes sense because the pressure was a little bit bigger than 7. Let's try question 8. Looking at this, I can immediately see what I did wrong. But let's work through this example. Um, we are being told that a canister has got a volume of 10 metres cubed. And that volume is being compressed down to half of its value, only 5 metres cubed. So this is V1. This is V2. Um, one thing I do know at this point is that if the volume is going down by a factor of two, then the pressure must go up by a factor of two. So in this transition from whatever P1 is to whatever P2 is, P2 is going to be double P1. Um, however, we are told that the canister was compressed to a volume of five metres cubed and it then had a pressure of eight kilopascals. And that's where I've gone wrong here, isn't it? I've made the eight kilopascals P1. Silly mistake. So let's put that mistake right. Um, the units. If I work out P1 in kilopascals, I haven't got to worry about doing eight kilopascals is equal to 8,000 pascals. I can just keep the units the same on both sides and that will save me one working with bigger numbers like more zeros, it's the same size number, but um, hopefully lead to less chance of a mistake because we are going to get this question right now. So 
P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Substituting in the numbers that I know, I do not know P1, however much I thought I did last time. I do not know P1, I do know V1. I do know P2 and I do know V2. 8 times 5 is 40. I really feel like I should check that on the calculator right now. No, I'm just going to go. It's, it is 40. I'm sure that's right. Rearranging the equation. So I'm effectively dividing both sides by 10 so that these ones cancel out, leaving me that P1 will be 40 divided by 10. But I realise that that last example, I also did that is a mathematical balance method and you might be a triangle user. So what I could do back at that step, hang on, if I go back, do, 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 pretend I never did that. There you go. If I go back to that step, I could draw a triangle at this stage that said P1 times by 10 will give me the answer 40 to show me that P1 is 40 divided by 10 when I cover over P1 in the triangle. So it doesn't matter which way I do it, whether I do it by the balance method or by using a triangle that what I should be doing at the end is 40 divided by 10, which is 4 kilopascals, which is half of 8. And at last, I think I got the answer right. So let's celebrate the end of the video with one final quote from perhaps one of the most famous of all physicists, 